Chapter 450 Infiltrating Openly Did you really know about the hostel? Jenna couldn't hide her curiosity and concern. What kind of peculiar creature was it? What did it say? Imre glanced at Valentine before responding. Under normal circumstances, it's an invisible creature. You can only confirm its existence through some traces and see if it's lingering around you. Valentine explained eagerly. From what I understand, it exists somewhere between the spirit world and reality. It's untouchable and difficult to detect with spirit vision. It's in a very peculiar state. I don't think that's all. According to the dossier, there are a few conceptual and abstract aspects about it. In short, you can only perceive it or sense its form through its reactions, if it's willing, or when it attacks you, Imre corrected Valentine. This is very similar to Bouvard's condition after his corpse was corrupted. However, Bouvard's corpse wasn't that formidable. As long as the environment is dark enough, it can be seen. Yes, according to Ciel, other than beyonders of a few pathways who have reached a certain sequence, it's indeed impossible to touch it directly and deal with it. Jenna made a connection and increasingly believed that the hostile Valentine and company knew was equivalent to the one they knew unless there were more than one of the same nature. Imre, who had a habit of wearing skin-colored tape across the bridge of his nose, paused for a moment before continuing. If that peculiar creature hadn't attacked our colleague, it wouldn't have been discovered. We obtained several pieces of information from it. One of them mentioned the hostel. What did it say? Jenna played along. Perhaps this contained the future direction of their investigation. Valentine furrowed his brow. It only said that it comes from the hostel, their home in this world. Jenna didn't use her instigation ability, but it was akin to instigation. Is there any other information? Otherwise, I wouldn't know how to help you gather information and who to watch out for. Emra hesitated for a few seconds. The rest of what it said isn't suitable for you to know. Yes, it calls itself a pixie. Pixie. An untouchable pixie, the corresponding sequence name of the boon's pathway. Jenna nodded thoughtfully. After a brief silence, Valentine said, Our colleague encountered this peculiar creature in an artist's studio. As for the painter, he was once treated for mental illness. He always claimed to travel with his spirit body every night and enter a strange space that's neither in reality nor in the spirit world. He fought invisible creatures, strange souls, and evil spirits that attempted to invade reality through that space to protect the peace of the entire street. Such claims led to him being sent to the asylum for treatment for a period of time. Subsequently, he was under prolonged medication. Our colleagues confirmed that what he said might be true. It sounds like he's corrupted by an evil god, but why would he wander about as a spear body and guard the street? Jenna didn't mention the term bestowed. Imris smiled disinterestedly and replied, The power of an evil god isn't necessarily evil, but they often bring catastrophe or cause illusions and changes in the recipient's personality. Can you accept that you're no longer yourself? Jenna wanted to habitually respond using silence, but she remembered that there were two purifiers opposite her, so she slowly shook her head. Valentine's tone remained anxious. We're telling you this because we want you to pay more attention to painters, novelists, or those who have private hobbies of painting, reading, and telling stories. If you discover anyone's abnormal behavior and language, report it to us immediately. By the way, some painters' works also possess a certain amount of supernatural power. That's also one of the clues, Imre added. Jenna nodded solemnly. No problem. Lumian who had gathered a wealth of information from various sources, realized that although he and the others had a basic understanding of the hostile pathway, they lacked substantial progress in their investigation. They still didn't know the location of the hostile or the heretic's plans. He had no choice but to turn his attention to General Phillips' widow and the charity organization known as the Dream Seekers. Late at night, at 9 Rue Le Viv, Cati 3, also known as the Administrative District, it was a three-story beige building surrounded by a garden, lawn, stables, a fountain, and statues. I was hoping to find an opportunity to ask for your help, 
I could use the ritualistic dogskin to infiltrate this place and search. Anthony Reed, with his buzz cut, said, glancing at Lumian beside him. Lumian let out a chuckle. <laughs> Official Beyonders can afford to worry about such trivial matters in the current situation. As he spoke, he crossed the street towards the beige building with sculpted outer walls. The two of them circled to the side of the garden and watched as the two valets passed by together and turned to the front. Lumian leapt up, pressing his hand against the white painted iron fence. He stretched his body and leapt over, landing silently. Anthony Reed was a seasoned veteran who had been forged by the crucible of the battlefield and maintained a habit of exercising. Although sequence 9-7 to seven of the spectator pathway didn't significantly enhance his combat techniques, nor did his physique improve significantly, it didn't prevent him from easily vaulting the fence and entering the garden. Lumian didn't bother concealing himself. Holding a top hat, he left the garden with one hand in his pocket and approached the main building. Occasionally, he paused, avoiding the gazes from inside the building's windows and the maid who was eager to return to her room. Before long, they arrived at the side door. The wolf-shaped dog guarding the area had already fallen asleep. Anthony Reed guessed that it was the doing of the two demonesses who had long concealed themselves and whose whereabouts were currently unknown. However, he felt that if that was the case, why act as if they were infiltrating? Lumian seemed to sense the psychiatrist's thoughts and smiled. The sedative we obtain from the Bliss Society is very effective. We have to use it sparingly. Furthermore, the Demonist sect had already purged the Bliss Society once, leaving only two key members in my Poo Mayor, who was currently hiding in the Market District. For the time being, no one was available to provide Lumian, Franca, and the others with supplies. Of course, the Demonist sect had definitely gained a lot. After Franca passed the assessment, she should have a chance to obtain something from them. Lumian walked past the unconscious dog, retrieved the wire, and expertly opened the side door of the building. At that moment, almost all the lights in the house had been extinguished, and the corridor was shrouded in darkness. With one hand in his pocket and the other clutching his top hat, Lumian made his way upstairs to the master bedroom, openly treating it as though it was his own home. Last time, he hid behind the scenes and instructed his partners to set traps. This time, he's using himself as bait to lure out potential problems. Different choices and different acting methods for a conspirer? Anthony Reed followed Lumian from behind, enlightened. Lumian reached the third floor master bedroom. Along the way, he took a detour and climbed up from the second floor balcony, avoiding the bodyguard at the staircase. Gazing at the vermilion door, he chuckled and said, <laughs> After General Philip passed away, didn't his widow receive the protection of Beyonders? The Beyonders they hire with their own money can only scare off ordinary thieves and bandits. There are Beyonders, but Beyonders working as bodyguards not only charge a high price, but they also have an attitude. They typically don't do night duty. Anthony Reed recounted his observations during this period. Let's pay attention to our volume later. At a time like this, the benefits of being a sleepless will be revealed. Lumian responded in a deep voice as he used the wire to open the master bedroom's door. Sleepless was a sequence 9 of the Evernight Pathway, renowned for not needing much sleep while staying vigorous. Anthony Reed followed Lumian into the room and closed the wooden door behind him. Then, Lumian donned a black top hat and lit the gas wall lamp on the wall. In the yellowish light, they saw a woman wrapped in a silk blanket lying on the bed. The woman stirred slowly, her wavy black hair framing a face that had seen four decades of life. Though traces of age marked her features, her skin remained remarkably smooth. Her amber eyes gradually blinked open, revealing a faint yellowish glow. They fixed on Lumian's transformed face, courtesy of the Nias face and the black top hat. Just as she prepared to speak, a cold muzzle pressed against her crimson lips. Relax. We're here for a small fortune and a few answers. If you cooperate, you won't get hurt. Lumian assured her with a smile. Despite having her house broken into in the dead of night and held at gunpoint, General Philip's widow, Annis, didn't dare to resist. She nodded quickly, signifying her willingness to comply. 
Look me in the eye. I want to be sure you're telling the truth. Anthony Reed lit a cigarette and brought it to his lips. Agnes subconsciously met the gaze of the intruder, doing her best to convey her sincerity through her eyes. She couldn't help but notice the robber's unusually clear, dark brown eyes, as if they held the key to his soul. The cigarette between his lips burned with a fiery red glow. The red dot flickered. After a while, Anthony Reed, who had used his actions, words, and demeanor to lull Annis into a semi-hypnotic state, delved into the depths of her body of heart and mind. Why did you donate so much of your wealth to the Dream Seekers charity organization? Annis's body of heart and mind replied without reservation. It was in Philip's will. If I didn't donate two-thirds of my assets to that charity, my child and I wouldn't inherit the remaining third. There is something suspicious about the Dream Seekers, and perhaps even General Philip too. Lumian found it difficult to believe the General to be that generous. Noting that Annis continued her life without any disruptions and seemed oblivious to any potential issues with General Philip, Anthony Reed changed his line of questioning. Was Philip still a devoted follower of the Eternal Blazing Sun? The psychiatrist believed that the general's daily routines in a marriage were hard to hide from Annis, even when other problems remained concealed. Annis's eyes grew distant as she replied. He hadn't prayed fervently in a long time, and his praises were quite perfunctory. I overhear him whisper in the corridor once, God is blessed.